Well, good morning. I'm Clark England. I'm the adult uh, Sunday school teacher for the adult Bible class at New Braunfels Bible Church. So we are studying uh, the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah has been writing to Israel about uh, their return from Babylon, uh, from the Babylonian exile. And this is literally 150 years or more uh, in the future that he's talking about. And he's been telling them about how God was using that time of exile to teach them how he was not powerless when they went into exile, but that he did this on purpose so that uh, they would be disciplined and that they would understand and return to him, uh, looking forward for his loving uh, kindness again. And this week, as we uh, look in Isaiah, we'll be ch in chapter 47. And this is about uh, God punishing Babylon uh, for their sin. So let's read Isaiah 47. We'll read out the New Living Translation. It says, Come down, virgin daughter of Babylon, and sit in the dust. For your days of sitting on a throne have ended. O daughter of Babylonia, never again will you be the lovely princess, tender and delicate. Take heavy millstones and grind flour. Remove your veil, strip off your robe, expose yourself to public view. You will be naked and burdened with shame. I will take vengeance against you without pity. Our Redeemer, whose name is the Lord of Heaven's armies, is the Holy One of Israel. O beautiful Babylon, sit now in darkness and silence. Never again will you be known as the Queen of Kingdoms, for I was angry with my chosen people and punished them by letting them fall into your hands. But you, Babylon, showed them no mercy. You oppressed even the elderly. You said, I will reign forever as Queen of the world. You did not reflect on your actions or think about your consequences. Listen to this, you pleasure-loving kingdom. Living at ease and feeling secure, you say, I am the only one and there is no other. I will never be a widow or lose my children. Well, both those things will come upon you in a moment, widowhood and the loss of your children. Yes, these calamities will come upon you despite all your witchcraft and magic. You felt secure in, the, in your wickedness. No one sees me, you said. But your wisdom and knowledge have led you astray and you said, I am the only one and there is no other. So disaster will overtake you and you won't be able to charm it away. Calamity will fall upon you, and you won't be able to buy your way out. A catastrophe will strike you suddenly, one for which you are not prepared. Now use your magical charms. Use the spells you have worked at all these years. Maybe they will do some good. Maybe they can make someone afraid of you. All the advice you receive has made you tired. Where are all your astrologers, those stargazers who make predictions each month? Let them stand up and save you from what the future holds but they are like straw burning in a fire. They cannot save themselves from the flame. You will get no help from them at all. Their hearth is no place to sit, sit for warmth. And all your friends, those with whom you've done business since childhood, will go their own ways, turning a deaf ear to your cries. So we um, jump in, in, the, in there and we see that in the first four verses that Babylonia, Babylon is being humiliated, that, um, you know, that's how it starts off. And, you know, you say, how are they being humiliated? And you see that they're sitting in the dust, that they're uh, no longer being called princess or being considered royal. They're having to grind their own flour. Uh, they're stripping down and then they're having to uh, be debased uh, sexually, uh, uncovering uh, their skin. And the term is uh, sexual humiliation. So they are being treated like slaves. So you see that they've lost their kingdom, that they've lost their ability to order people around and have slaves and servants of their own. They now are the ones who have to do the work. They are now the servant and the slave, and they are humiliated uh, even uh, and treated uh, such like slaves were, uh, and that how they treated slaves in those days. You know, and who is humiliating Babylon? Well, we see in verse 4 that it's the Lord of Heaven's armies, or uh, the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, the Holy One of Israel. Uh, so it's God Almighty. Uh, Yahweh, uh, who is doing the humiliating. We, and so we, we start off with, well, 
why was Babylon a prideful kingdom? You know, what brought on this humiliation? Why were they a prideful kingdom? And if you, re you remember uh, your studies of the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the, uh, the large image and the golden head was reflective of Babylon. And they were the pride uh, of the ancient world. They were the first of the great world kingdoms. And they, uh, on that statue, were the best, uh, were depicted by the gold and being the head. Uh, they had power over all the kings. They were rich. They were wise. They pursued knowledge and wisdom. Uh, they um, built, we know, Nebuchadnezzar built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So they had great architecture. They had great engineering, having aqueducts that would bring water in from a distance. Uh, so they had all these things uh, to be proud of, um, but they let the pride uh, get the better of them. And so as we go on to verses 5 to 11, you know, how does Isaiah condemn their pride? You know, what is he, uh, what were they proud of and, and how does Isaiah condemn them for that? Well, for starters, they showed no mercy. Uh, when, they cap when they captured land, and especially when they captured Israel, uh, there was no mercy shown to the people they took. There was no mercy shown to the elderly. Uh, they oppressed even the elderly and, and forced them into the slave labor. Uh, their, their thoughts were that they were going to reign forever. You know, they had... Uh, like I said, they were the first world kingdom. And so that pride that we are the best and we're the first that we are going to rule forever, uh, they did not see an end to their kingdom. And we saw then that uh, Isaiah condemns them for their focus on pleasure. They, they sought pleasure. Uh, not only did they seek wisdom, but they sought pleasure. And everything was done uh, for a purpose there. And, and um, we saw that their wickedness, which really was looked on as their pursuit of wisdom and knowledge uh, through their pursuit of witchcraft and magic. Uh, we see them being condemned for that as well. A and finally, the, the one primary thing that they're really condemned for their pride is the phrase, I'm the only one and there is no one, uh, no one else like me. Uh, we saw that in the previous chapters. God says, I am, and there is none beside me. And they literally have taken that saying and applied it to themselves. They have replaced God with their own kingdom. And God does not cotton to anyone uh, replacing him. And so their pride is condemning them. And we see that God uh, will take them and they will lose their kingdom forever. Uh, you know, one of the things is she was saying, well, you know, I've not lost children. I've not lost a husband. And God says, you're going to become a widow and you're going to be a mourning mother uh, on the same day. You're going to lose everything. Um, and he says in, in one verse, I'm going to bring calamity. And then the next verse, I'm going to bring disaster. And finally, he says, I'm going to bring catastrophe. Uh, on you, and it's going to happen in an instant. You will not be prepared for it, and you can't do anything to stop it. You know, three vicious words to describe how bad it will be and how far that fall uh, from their pride will take them. And so God is going to bring them down and condemn them for their pride. Um, you know, well, what did Babylon use magic and astrology for? We saw that uh, in the first couple verses. And then in verse 12, it says, hey, maybe your magicians and your astrologers can uh, figure out some spells and, and take care of you. And maybe they'll even scare people away. Um, well, they used magic and astrology to foretell the future. Uh, they were the ones, so if you go and read your horoscope in the newspaper every day, Babylon and, the, and their astrologers are the ones that created that. Uh, way back in the 600-ish uh, BC. Uh, they studied the stars, the movement of the stars and the planets, and, and 
they use that uh, to uh, catalog literally everything that was happening. So every time they could see that a star moved and a certain event on Earth happened, they cataloged it. And so while our modern horoscopes use Greek terms for the, the uh, constellations in the sky, everything was set up by the Babylon, Babylonians uh, back in that day, trying to predict the future. And they used magic as well. So they cast spells, but they also did a bunch of cataloging of um, sacrifices in animals uh, used in the sacrifices and the remains of the animals and the ashes in the sacrifice. And they catalog that with happenings to, again, predict the future, uh, anything that they could so that they would understand uh, and be able to predict what would happen uh, in many ways to cut God out uh, of their life. And this way they could uh, be able to tell the king uh, some story and he would reward them for it. And so you say, you know, Isaiah is kind of tooth, in, you know, tongue in cheek saying, you know, maybe your, your magicians can stop all this. Well, how effective will they be? They won't be. Uh, we know that they won't be effective at stopping this. You know, um, verse 14 says, you know, uh, it'll be like lighting straw on fire. Well, straw burns fast. There's no heat generated. So you can't use it to cook with. You can't use it to warm yourself. That's not effective. They'll be as effective as burning straw. Verse 15 says that your friends that you've done business with since your youth, people that you've known all that time, are going to walk away and turn a deaf ear. You can call after them, but they're going to pretend they don't even know you. And we, we see that uh, these guys won't be effective because, well, they're going up against God. God is greater than all of them. In verse 6, uh, God says, I allowed this to happen. It wasn't because I was powerless. It wasn't because you were so great at conquering people. I allowed this to happen to discipline my people. I was angry with them because they were disobedient, so I disciplined them. And then uh, verse uh, three, God says, I will take vengeance. And if you've made an enemy of God, you've made an enemy that you cannot stand against. And we see in verse four that it's Yahweh, the Lord God Almighty, who's directing these events and directing this punishment. You know, so it's uh, a sad day for Babylonian pride. They have, you know, deified themselves with the statement that I am, and there is none like like them. They've done everything to cut God out of their life by employing magic and astrology, uh, but it's not effective. Their pride is their downfall. And as we, you know, look and say, what, well, what does that mean for us today? If you can't see parallels between uh, what Babylon was doing and what the, it, we are experiencing in today's world, uh, you're probably not looking very hard. Uh, but we see that God protects his people. You know, God says, I put them into uh, Babylon, into exile, so that I would discipline them, so that they would turn to me. Well, God protects his people, and his people in today's day and age are the church. He will protect them, but he will discipline us when we uh, fail him, and when we not fail him so much as when we disobey him. Uh, but God will always protect his people. But the key thing are the last two bullets there. Man's wisdom can't replace God, and our pride will cause us to be humbled. Well, man's wisdom cannot replace God. We, we saw that Babylon was trying to do so with the horoscopes and the magicians, you know, trying to predict what would happen so that they don't need to surrender to God. They have control of everything. Well, if I can control the future because I can tell what's going to happen, then I can control it. Um, you know, today's day and age, we have all the scientific advances and, you know, cloning and euthanasia and gene or DNA manipulation and fetal tissue research and cryogenics and all sorts of scientific uh, things. And we, we leave the ethics out. We leave morality out. Um, and science uh, has made such great, great advances 
and man's knowledge has increased. I mean, you look at the Library of Congress, you look at all the books that have been written, and people are basically saying, well, we've learned so much, we know so much, we don't need God. Uh, we can do without him. Uh, and you see that call over and over again. The church is obsolete. What do we need God for? We've done everything, and we've learned everything we can possibly learn. And what we don't know now, we're working on learning. Um, and, and that pride is the same kind of pride that God uh, points out in Babylon and how he says, I will humble you. I will bring you down, and, and I will punish you for both your pride and for your treatment of my people. Uh, and their pride said, I am, and there is none like me. They quoted God and applied it to themselves. And we, in today's day and age, when we say we have learned all, and we know all, and we are learning even more, and we don't need God to do this learning, and we can go on and do uh, such things without morality, God will, is paying attention. And God will act, and our pride will cause us to be humbled as well. So thanks for joining us this week, next week, uh, 8.30 Zoom, if you want to join us in person. Otherwise, you can look for us on the New Braunfels Bible Church website and uh, on the YouTube channel set up by our AV team. Thank you so much. We appreciate all that uh, your participation in our studies of Isaiah. Thank you.